So today we're sitting down with Ted Kirst, owner of Seabird Tree Lodge, and uh, well, we're gonna pick his brain. First, uh, before you bought the lodge, you were a tour guide here in Costa Rica. That's true. How long have you been doing that? Uh, you, I thought, I think my first group was in 92, and still doing that today, so. And why Costa Rica? How did that start? It? Well, I did tour guiding quite a lot in many countries around, and, and I picked Costa Rica because of its nature, of the people, and uh, I like the country. So if you have to name one highlight of people who really must see when they come down to Costa Rica, what would be like the best place to go? Definitely there is no best place to go. There are a few places that are mentioned as must-go places such as Monteverdi or Manuel Antonio. With my experience I would rather say don't go there because too many people there. Um, I would rather uh, suggest to find places where not so many tourists are and there's nature everywhere, there's beautiful places in the mountains, on the ocean, in both sides of the country. Um, so I wouldn't mention one place, I just would try to avoid these hot spots. Okay. So when people book a trip and come down to Costa Rica and they really want to see the best of Costa Rica, how long should they come for? What would be a proper duration of a stay? Well, to see the best, I would suggest to be here like half a year, that would be good. <laughs> but most people don't have that much time, so I would say the minimum would be like two weeks. But in two weeks, you need to decide if you want to go to the Caribbean and the north, or if you rather go on the Pacific coast. You can't do the whole country in two weeks. Uh, most of my customers, they travel like three weeks. That gives you like two, two and a half weeks to drive around the country and at the end a few days on the beach. I think that is, uh, uh, that's a nice combination. Sounds like a cunning plan. Yeah. So Ted, you became quite a travel expert of Costa Rica. You also made the German version Reise Know-How Costa Rica, which is like the German version of Lonely Planet. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your book? First, it's not, has nothing to do with Lonely Planet. Lonely Planet is for mainly low budget travelers. This is like for everybody, middle budget, high, high end or even low budget. Uh, I started this book in 93, yeah. so I try to keep that updated every second year and it's selling quite good, I'm happy and um, I'm already preparing the next edition. Nice, people can buy this online as well? You can buy that online, yeah, it's uh, riseknowhow.de, that's the... I'll domain. put a link down there in the description. Right. Good. Okay, thank you very much. So what would be your best experience out of Costa Rica? I had many, many good experiences here and I'm a nature lover so first of all I enjoy nature and I enjoy watching animals and uh, just like two days ago I was on the coast and I've seen more than 100 pelicans wow. flying along and uh, right here on the lodge we have two cones coming and like two years ago, I think it was two years ago, we went to Rincón de la Vieja National Park and we've seen an anteater very close. Usually you, you don't see them during the day because they're sleeping and uh, we've seen it right on the on the tree next to us and that was like an amazing experience. Awesome. And your worst experience? Well my worst experience is many years back I had an, an accident. I had a pothole that I drive in with my car and I had two ties broken mm. and it was raining and I was really pissed, sorry for the word. But uh, that is many years ago, and the roads now are in much better condition, so it's much easier to drive around and uh, there's no more danger of potholes or something. There are some remote areas where you might find some, but all in all, the roads are now very good. Yeah, that's good. So before you mentioned my customers, uh, what do you mean with your customers? You offer tours? Yeah, uh, I'm a tour operator. I have a tour company named Travel Design. And as the name says, we design the tours individually. So the people would call me or write me and I ask them, when are you going to travel? How long are you going to travel? What is your interests? What's your budget? And then I make them uh, an itinerary that of course they can still change it. And uh, I give them suggestion for hotels. Uh, I give them a, a reliable uh, car rental and some tours. But they travel on their own. 
We also have a, a couple of groups that we manage throughout the year, small groups, maximum of 12 people with local guides that speak German, so that would be the other option. But most of my customers travel on their own, so I prearrange it and they just go and enjoy. Make sure to check out the link in the description, because that's very interesting. Customized travel trips. So why should people come to Nuevo Arenal? Uh, Nuevo Arenal is conveniently located between the Caribbean side and the Pacific side, so if you change ocean, uh, don't go through the Valle Central, there's a lot of traffic and hassle. And around here, this would be like a good stopover from one side to the other. And we are located right in between two very important national parks. We have on that side, we have the Arenal Volcano and uh, quite a number of uh, hot springs and uh, hanging bridges and canopy tours and hiking trails. And so there's a lot to do. And on the other side, uh, we have Tenoria National Park with one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the country. It's called Rio Celeste. It's like a blue river. So uh, that is very beautiful. And also you don't have to go far. I mean, you have the birds here. You have a nice climate. It's not so hot as it is in other parts of the country. Um, you can do kayak tours down on the lake. You can go horseback riding. So it's plenty of things just to do next to the lodge. And of course, bird watching is great here. Absolutely. Why should people stay here? What's, what's so special about a lodge? Um, the lodge is small, only seven rooms, so lots of privacy, very personal attention. And uh, we have a beautiful family here that is running the lodge, that is making great breakfast and dinner if you like. And they take care and they would do you like a garden tour and explain about the plants here. And uh, the manager also does kayak tours. And uh, we have nice rooms and they're not very expensive, so it's affordable for everybody. Okay. I think that's a good alternative because if you go out to Fortuna, you have hundreds of hotels, but all of them are very big and groups. And uh, if you want to get away from that hassle, I think Sabre Tree Lodge would be a good option. Peaceful and quiet. That's true. And beautiful nature, as you've already seen. So what type of guest is the Sabre Tree Lodge uh, best suited for? Well, we're open for anyone. We have customers from overseas, we have customers from Costa Rica, from North America, Europe, anywhere. I think this lodge would not really be nice for people who need like a high-end comfort, air condition, hot top, stuff like that. We don't have it. And it would not be suitable for people trying just to have party and get drunk. Uh, it's more for nature lovers, for people who try to relax and enjoy just the, the views we have, enjoy the nature and you know like calm down we have people coming from san jose and they spend the weekend here and they say wow this is just get away from the traffic and the noise and they really enjoy it so what would be the best time to come to costa rica basically you can travel any time of the year most uh, european and north american travelers come here anytime between november and april which uh, is a good time to travel no doubt because it's cold there and it's nice here. But uh, this is also high season, so the prices are a bit higher and there's more people around. Um, you can even travel the rest of the year. May, June is a beautiful time to travel. I refuse talking about rainy season and dry season because it's raining in dry season almost every day and it's uh, mostly nice weather in, in rainy season. It's raining a bit more, but it doesn't make a big difference. Um, we call it green season, so anything starting from May all the way down to October is green season. The prices are lower, less people, and uh, so you can travel spending less money and uh, have more time to enjoy and more money left in your pockets. That's also important. Yeah, low budget. So the painful question, how has COVID affected your business? Pretty much. It went from 100 to almost zero. We had no customers between March and October. The country was closed. Nobody could come in. But then after November, December, we had a few customers, not many, but they were very happy to travel and they said it was easy and fine traveling here. 
The fact is that now the numbers in Costa Rica are decreasing. They're pretty low, less than in most countries of Europe. So you can travel pretty safely around, of course. Agreed. You must do some precautions here. Um, but the most cases, you would have them in San Jose and surroundings. So here in the countryside, it's pretty safe. And um, I would suggest travel right now because now it's very, very good time of the year to travel. Very few people, good discounts in most places. And I would say it's safer than most countries of Europe. I have to agree. So start booking. So if people want to book a trip with your travel design, where can they book you? Where can they find you? Well, they can find information on my website, traveldesign.de, or they write me email, info at traveldesign.de. I would be more than happy to answer that personally. I make them a customized tour plan according to their budget. And um, I think they're most of my customers, if not all, are very, very happy traveling here and have everything prepared. Don't make too much worries yeah okay so i think that's a good way to travel so you know where to go so would you have any tips for people traveling to costa rica basically it depends how they travel so some prefer travel with a tour guide so he would do anything or with a group but for those people travel on their own individually um i would suggest to rent a car because, of course, you can take public buses that are cheaper, definitely. But then most of these bus connections are just between cities and towns. You would not get to remote places. You would not get to a nice national park or to a beautiful nature lodge like this one here. It's hard to get there with a the bus. With a rental car, you are more flexible. You can go wherever you want. You can stop where you like. You can you know, choose a restaurant you want or a beach or everything. It costs a bit more, but it gives you much more flexibility for individual traveling off the beaten track. So that's why I would, I would suggest a car. I have to agree with that. Thank you very much for your time. And also thank you very much for having us here. Really enjoying our time Thanks here. Thanks for talking to me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. And uh, hopefully we can fill this place with guests. Really, this is such a nice paradise place. It, you got the birds, you got the lake, you got the mountains. There's so much to do, so much to see, or just stay in and have a quiet time. So make sure to come down here, make sure to book your trip, and um, hopefully we we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you.